Whoa. I got hit on the drop. Are you on? There we go. That was quick. What's up anglers and anglets? It's your boy Sven and welcome back to my channel. I'm out here to do some I'm out here to do some good old jetty fishing over in Seal Beach. A little breezy, but that's all right. The wind is actually super refreshing right now. The wind's blowing that way, so I'm gonna fish on this side over here just to kind of not have to deal with the wind. So here's the plan. I'm gonna cast out, and if there's fish, keep fishing the spot. And if there's no fish, then I'm gonna move farther down the jetty. But enough chit chat, let's gear up and see what we can catch today. Before we get started, let's do the safety bit before I forget again. The waves are kind of rough right now. You want to be careful of these waves because you never know when the big one's going to come in. When you're fishing out here, you're going to want to wear appropriate footwear. I actually got my hiking boots this time instead of my tennis shoes. They got some really nice traction to keep me from slipping. If you do need to go down the jetty rocks to either land a fish, get some water or wash your hands. Maybe look up every like 10 seconds to make sure no big wave's gonna come get you. Be careful around the wet rocks for sure. Even if your shoe has really good traction, there could be a thin layer of algae and that might be enough to make you slip. So just be mindful of that. I am using a slightly different rig today, which actually shouldn't even be that different. Let's just see what we can catch with it. Whoa. I got hit on the drop. Are you on? There we go. That was quick. Let's see what we got. Looks like a croaker. It's a dinky yellow fin. Nice, well, I mean, of course nice. I know they go for shrimp. It's like one of my favorite fish to catch on shrimp. Look how nice and yellow his fins are. I love yellow fin croakers. This guy is pretty small and it's my first fish, so let's let him on back. Thanks for playing, Mr. Yellowfin. Boop. Bye. Oh shoot, time to head back up before I get splashed. That was a good first catch. Glad the yellow fins are still out here. Cool thing about fish is that if you catch one, there's probably a couple more around them. There's a plastic bag just floating there. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, I think I got it. Nice, I guess I'm trash fishing. There was also a couple of fish that was chasing this bag. That's kind of odd. Well, at least you're out of the water. I'll take care of you later. This is a good spot. That's not going anywhere. Well, whatever those chasers are, they don't look like they're interested in my bait. That's all right though. We're just gonna catch what we can with what we got. You double the shrimp, you double the chances to catch things that like it. I can't tell if it's a fish, but I was just retrieving to check my baits. It's fighting like a fish. Nice, we got a leopard shark. Look at this neat leopard shark boy. I wonder what a legal one would feel like in terms of a fight. The legal size for these guys is like 36 inches or something. This is definitely not 36 inches. And even if I did catch a legal one, I don't think I would keep a shark. They're too neato. I really like the patterns of the leopard shark. Thanks for playing, Mr. Sharky boy. Always fun to catch. Uh, as I mentioned before, their skin kind of feels like sandpaper. When I was unhooking him, he rubbed against my arm. Kind of making it a little itchy. So normally when I do a high-low rig, I always tie it straight to the braid. This time, however, I'm using the Hurricane 20 pound double drop surf fishing leader. They have two dropper loops already built in. You just put loop to loop and you're good to go. I'm also using a three ounce pyramid. I think one problem that people have when they start fishing is they get overwhelmed by all the technicals that you need to kind of know. Like if you're new to fishing, you don't want to head out here and be super confused by everything. But once you got the basics down, you're kind of good to go. That's actually why bait and weights and high low rigs are my favorite setup for almost any type of fishing because it's super simple to just pick up and give it a shot. Shrimp's always a good bait. Squid's a great bait too. Just don't worry too much about it. Try different baits, try different rigs, try different whatever you want to try as long as you can catch fish. I think one of the most important things about fishing is actually getting out to the water and fish. You need to build that experience. Actually no, the most important thing about fishing is to be safe about it and to have fun. But 
you know, you're not getting any more bites at this spot, so let's move out farther on the jetty. You don't really need to go too far. You just want to try different spots to see if there's any fish nibbling there. Let's try over here really quick. Hello? Am I stuck? Could be a huge ball of seaweed. These are such a pain to reel in. Wait, nope, that's a fish. It's a sea pancake. Here, let me show you guys how to safely unhook sea pancakes. So when you have them laying on their backs like this, it's perfectly fine. They can't strike underneath them. Some people also like to step on their tails to make sure it can't thrash up. I think they're pretty neat. Thanks for playing, Mr. Sea Pancake. Hope this isn't too high. Bye. Here's a little fun fact about Seal Beach, and I guess a little bit about stingrays as well. If you ever want to catch a whole bunch of stingrays, this is probably going to be your best bet out here in Seal Beach. There's just something about the water over here that's really nice for them. I think it's just really warm and flat and sandy. But with that said, if you're ever swimming in Seal Beach, that's why you gotta be a little extra careful. There's a little method you can do if you're swimming here. You wanna do something that people call the stingray shuffle. What I mean by that is while you're walking around on the sand, just cause some disturbances, kick up some sand, make some movement, let the stingrays know that you're there. I think stingrays are a little misunderstood sometimes. They're really docile. They don't go out of their way to hurt you. They only do that if they feel threatened, like if you accidentally step on one that's just camouflaged in the sand. So if you're ever swimming in a place that has a lot of stingrays, do the stingray shuffle, let them know you're there and they'll scurry off, no problem. Nibble, couple small nibbles. Oh, this one's got a nice fight. Taking a little drag out, just a little bit. Another sea pancake? Yep, another sea pancake. I'm telling you, there's a lot of them out here. This is what a stingray looks like when it's trying to fight you. Thanks for playing, Mr. Sea Pancake. Back you go. Goodbye. As always, don't forget to stay hydrated. Hiking out and hiking back while you're dehydrated super sucks. So trust me when I say bring a little water with you. Maybe a little snack too. Okay, I think it's about time to call it. The sun's gone down, the bite slowed down as well. It was still a pretty great day for fishing though, so let's just uh, head on back. Still got a lot of shrimp, but here's the last one that I cut up. Whoever gets that, gets that. Probably just gonna chill here for like another five minutes and just take in the scenery. Thanks for watching. Later. Cool beans, there's still just enough light to make it back safely. Unfortunately, this is pretty common plastic water bottles and other drink cups or whatever that people bring out here. I think this one's one of those inflatable boats like the tiny ones. Why are there so many shopping carts out here? One of those hot water kettles. Like why is this out here? Actually, I can probably say that for a lot of things I see out here. Pantsless man is still on the loose. One of those boat dock buoys right here. Looks like one of those ice packs that you can put in the freezer and somebody lost one of their shoes. We got two super big tires over here. 